Hey everyone, it's Magdalena, that's me in the red boots, and Miss Sasha coming up rolling on her back to show me her belly. I'm going to be having a bath today, Sasha, and um, yeah, I'm just going to be taking you guys through a bath with Sasha and a little bit of grooming and kind of generally what I do in between and with dogs today. Mostly it's just going to be Sasha and I. You'll see a little bit of Louie, this other guy I'll be doing in between. So I'm just hooking Sasha up here with our lead or leash just to keep them secure because we don't want them flying around the tub or hurting themselves or us. This dog is such a good girl. I just showed you a cotton pad there. We always put cotton pads in the dog's ears to prevent water from getting into them, especially the dogs that have ears that perk up. Water can definitely get into their ears easily. That does not mean dogs with ears that kind of flop down aren't at risk for ear infections because since their ears are actually closed shut, the floppy ones actually leaves less room for air circulation. So I'm just washing her in the tub. We have what's called a hydro surge. So the green hose is just the regular water supply from the city. And I'm just trying to find the right temp here. She's so good just sitting there. Just trying to find the right temperature here. Um, it's kind of chilly today and slow, which is why I'm able to do this video today. And just gonna wet her head. And even though the cotton balls are still in her ears, I try my best to avoid directing the hose straight into her ear. And if I do have to wash off her ears, I just stick my thumb, not in her ear, but just to block it. And then, so I'm clogging up the tub now. She's exploding. And so I'm just gonna start mixing in shampoos with the regular water supply as the tub fills. So this is an oatmeal based shampoo. And then the second shampoo I'm putting in is a brightening shampoo or color enhancer. You just mix it really scientific, you know. Um, so just filling up the tub, just enough water to get her washed thoroughly. So what the Hydro Surge is going to do is, so now I'm turning off the water supply. And then I saw, I guess I saw a cotton ball fly over here and I'm getting ready to put more in there. Usually dogs really enjoy their face being washed. I'm using a blueberry facial shampoo so they can practically eat it, get it up their nose or lick it, sniff it and be totally fine and get it in their eyes especially and be totally fine. Dogs actually really like this, and I actually had a lot of time to kind of be with her and make her feel good. Anyway, so the red hose is going to take the water that is in the tub right now, and I'm trying to stomp on this button that turns that hose on, um, is going to take the water that's in the tub and circulate it through the red hose and onto Sasha. and. Sometimes if I feel that if a dog is really dirty and the water starts turning brown, then obviously they'll get a second bath and third if they need a fourth, but that's rare. But usually a dog like this just needs one bath. Sasha comes in regularly. Her dad actually called on a good day to get her washed because we're actually pretty slow on this day in particular. I think it was the Saturday after New Year's. So as strong as the Hydro Surge is, I do like to use my other free hand to kind of rub in the product and get it nice and deep into the skin.
So just then I was just kind of trying to see if Sasha's anal glands were full um, and they weren't. So while she's sitting in her shampoo for at least five minutes, I'm gonna go clean up around the tub room. Just keeping the salon clean throughout the day when you can really helps a lot at the end of the day, especially. Okay, now I'm just trying to get all the bubbles out the best way to get all the bubbles out without wasting so much water is to use a uh, fabric softener. It actually, I don't know the science behind it, but it makes the bubbles go away. So just quickly washing, washing, click quill. So I'm just quickly washing Sasha's face. I try to get this part over and done with as quickly as possible because not a lot of dogs like it. I know very few dogs that like this process of rinsing off the face. But you want it to be squeaky clean because if you leave shampoo on the dog, it can create skin problems, make them itchy, and then they'll have to come back and get another bath. Turning the water pressure up for her body. Check in to see how her ears are doing. Usually I like to pat them dry, make sure the cotton balls aren't in there anymore before we leave the tub. Just give them a good rub down with the towel before we hit the dryer. She's so good. She's such a good girl. So I know a lot of people on YouTube or just people who watch others in the pet industry have this whole thing about people being too rough or too aggressive and we are not gonna get our job done if we just pet your dog all day. Um, you know, Sasha here is very comfortable with what I'm doing. She obviously isn't fighting me or doesn't seem to mind what I'm doing. She's not barking or crying or, you know, letting me know that she's uncomfortable in any way, shape or form. And it's hard to communicate how heavy handed or light handed I'm being in the video just because I you guys can't feel what I'm doing in the video but I promise you she's fine so what I put on her head here is called a happy hoodie and this is to protect her ears and to protect the air from going into her ears from the force dryer because it is a strong dryer I usually wear ear protection myself but since I'm only gonna be doing this for a couple minutes um, I just decided to just get it done. 
Also too, another thing that I noticed when watching this video over is that it looks like I'm touching her skin with the dryer, like it looks like I'm rubbing her skin with the hose, but I'm actually just so close to it that it looks that way. Again, if she was feeling uncomfortable, she would definitely let me know because that is something that we do do at Gina's Dirty Dog is listen to our dogs. Okay, very close to being done with this boy. Just cleaning out his ears, plucking whatever hair wants to come out. There's not a lot of hair in his ears, so I'm just kind of plucking out what wants to come out. Depending on the dog's ear and how it looks, I uh, will determine whether or not I need to pluck more out. Just going with some ear cleaner. I like to use two cotton pads here, one for each ear, just because if there is a problem in one ear, you don't want to transfer it over with the same cotton ball used in the other ear. Louis definitely likes the taste of his earwax, which is gross, but it's okay because he's a dog. Dogs will usually clean each other's ears um, if they have a sibling or just in general.
going to check who came in through the door and here's me getting a beef treat for him out of the cookie jar and he knows exactly the routine. He knows the routine here. He's such a good boy. He gets it. Good job. So now I just gotta clean off my station and then move on to the next thing. Okay, going back to check on Miss Sasha, see if she's dry. She should be dry. Blowing her out before putting her on the floor dryer helps with the speed and just for her not to be cold as, as heck. <laughs> Imagine going in a wind tunnel straight out of the shower. Okay, check in to see. Wow. Oh my, no, I'm not like actually there, but she's just so cute. Okay. Now I gotta get my tools for her. I'm gonna be using a rubber curry brush. So Sasha's dad said that she can't have any treats today and I'm just showing Sasha here some positive Reinforcement, just letting her know she's doing well and she's doing good by just petting to her and talking to her for a little bit before we move on to the next thing. Usually treats will let a dog know like, okay, we're doing good. Okay, this is fun. Great. So I'm just doing that without the treat by showing her some love and affection. So I have a routine when I do a dog. I like to start with the nails. Um, for example, this bath dog, I'll start with the nails do the brush out and then finish up with the ears. If it's a haircut dog, usually I'll do the nails, pads, sanitary, do the body, and then scissor work, the face, and then the ears. I'm just checking out Sasha's nails here and I'm slowly realizing that I'm gonna be needing help with her nails. I'm gonna have to ask Gina for help because one of her nails are curling over. So here comes Gina and I'm just gonna have Gina talk to her just to kind of reassure her that everything's okay and no one's gonna hurt her because this is a little bit uncomfortable for her. I will show in a clip shortly that her nail is kind of curling over and that was me telling Gina she can't have treats, sadly, because usually dogs will do anything for treats, but. And I think I'm about to show you her foot right now, just a close up of it. You see how close it is to her pad and I can't really get the nail clipper in between her nail and her pad to cut that part. So what I'm trying to do is to clip as much off as I can with the nail clipper and then use the grinder to sand it down as opposed to forcing my nail clipper in between the pad and the nail. So nail care is definitely an essential part of your dog's health because if you don't get the nails done regularly or if your dog doesn't wear their nails down, 
to the point of it being comfortable for them, what will happen is that the nail can grow so long that it can curl into your dog's foot or their paw pad and make it extremely uncomfortable for them to walk. It's like never clipping your toenails and being forced to walk in shoes that are too tight for you, which hurts. So Gina and I are just trying to do our best to get her nails down and just to keep her as comfortable as possible. And here's the after, much better. Oh, I wish I could have given her a treat so bad, but she's gotta be positive. Tell her she's a good girl. Okay, and now that the nails are done, I'm just gonna go in with the rubber curry. And then after the rubber curry, you're gonna see me go in with a 40 blade. It's basically just the shortest blade that we have. It's very much like that thing called the Furminator. It's pretty much just a blade on a stick. So I just use one of my softer blades to kinda go over her back coat with and, and to get the loose hairs out. And then I go in with a comb to remove any hairs that may be just kind of hanging out on her. Give her that finished look. Okay, and that's it for this morning, or part of my morning. Got to watch me bathe Sasha and work on Louie for a little bit, and got to see some of Gina, the owner of the salon. And this was just to show you guys we're not petting dogs all day. Just kidding. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, just leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, tell me what you'd like to see next. Um, more videos are gonna be coming soon, hopefully weekly. If you are here from my podcast, welcome. This is me. This is the person behind the mic. And if you are new here, go check out my podcast because I have a whole lot of content on there. I will leave everything and my Instagram down in the description box below. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.